Hello everybody and welcome again to a short stop with a short stop. Today we're going to talk about scouts. There's a lot of scouts in the major leagues. Uh, there's a lot of scouting supervisors, a lot of cross checkers, uh, and in each state in the uh, United States, there's two or three scouts for each team and, and a lot of foreign countries. And they try to shake the bushes and see who the best players are out there when draft day comes up so that they can make the best picks that they possibly can to make their teams better. And they're always looking to the future. Uh, and, and, and looking at these kids, whether they're in high school or whether they're in college, to, to see what kind of players they are. When I was in the eighth grade, there was a, a scout, the Cincinnati Reds, his name was Gene Bennett. Uh, he came up to me and gave me his card and he said, I'm going to be looking at you, kid, for a long time. I, I said, thank you, sir. <laughs> and, and, but as time went by, I saw quite a bit of him. He ended up being the director of uh, scouting uh, for the Cincinnati Reds, an assistant uh, general manager uh, before he retired. When I was a senior in high school, things were absolutely going crazy. Uh, I was in school one day at, at, at uh, I think I was in geometry class, and there was a knock at the door and it was our principal. And he said, can you come down to the office? I said, yeah. I walked down to the office and there was a man there by the name of Tony Lucadella. <clears throat> he was a Philadelphia Phillies scout. And the principal said he's wanting to take you over to the baseball field and work you out. I said, you mean I get to get out of geometry class? I said, no problem. <laughs> so he, he took me over into the tennis courts, which were beside of our baseball field, and started hitting me ground balls. And he said it was going to simulate AstroTurf. And I said, great. And, then he, he said, well, after we do that, I need to throw you some batting practice. He said, but I don't have anybody that can throw. He said, you, anybody on your team want to throw to you? I said, well, the best one is uh, one of my teammates by the name of R.J. Williams. So he made another call over to school, and they got R.J. out of school, and he came over, and he was throwing me batting practice. And the next day, I get to the baseball field just a little bit early before everybody else, and I see a man sitting in the dugout, and I walk in there, and he introduced himself to me, and he was a Pittsburgh Pirates guy. His name was Danny Murtaugh. He used to be at one time the, the manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and then the next year, he, he became the manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates again. But we sit down and had a long talk, and he tried to find out as much about me as he possibly can. But some of these scouts <clears throat> were literally coming to school every single day. And my senior year, there was only 26 major league teams uh, in the majors. But a lot of times when I was playing, there would be three or four scouts from each team coming to watch me play. But they started coming to school every single day. They started giving me eye tests, see what kind of depth perception I had, whether you could pick up a curveball or a fastball. They were giving me psychological tests. They were literally walking around my neighborhood, knocking on my neighbor's doors, wanting to find out what kind of person I was. And they kind of turned my world upside down. Tony Lucadella one day came to school, wanted to know if I could come over and work out again. <clears throat> and I told him, no, I, I gotta go play in a golf. <laughs> I talked to my coach, Charlie Atkins. And I, told, I said, Charlie, these guys are working me out so hard, my arm is killing me. I can't even throw a ball from shortstop to first base right now. Charlie said, you go play golf today. And the next day I came back and played baseball and Charlie, he said there was 50 scouts at the game yesterday wanting to watch you. He said they were mad as hornets because you didn't show up. But he, Charlie knew what was going on and he, he took care of me. With the Giants, <clears throat> there was a man by the name of Carl Hubble. He was the director of the scouting uh, department for the Giants at that time. And he was a guy that in, I think it was 1934 All-Star game, he struck out five 
Hall of Famers in a row. And four of them were part of the uh, New York Yankees. So, uh, and he struck out Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Jimmy Fox, Al Simmons, and Joe Cronin all at one time. But there was another scout in Kentucky. His name was Hugh Poland. He was the one that signed me. But these guys would come and they would watch people play every single day. And how, how in the world did they find a little guy by the name of Johnny Lamaster, a little skinny guy in a town of Paintsville, Kentucky? They shook the bushes. They wanted to find out who the best players were so that they could help their teams to become better each and every single year. But as we look at the Bible, there were some scouts. Uh, if we look at Numbers chapter 13, there was actually 12 scouts. But I think the Bible calls them spies. But Moses picked 12 men. He told 12 men to go over into the promised land and scout out the area. And in Numbers chapter 13, starting in verse 17, it says, When Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, he said to them, Go up there to the Negev, then go into the hill country. See what the land is like and whether the people there live in it are strong or weak. See, they, wanted to, they, they were scouting them out. Whether there were few or many. How in this land in which they live, is it good or bad? And how are the cities in which they live? Are they open camps or with fortifications? See, he's telling them how to scout these cities and these people out. How is the, the land? Is it fat or lean? Are there trees in it or not? Make an effort then to go get some, some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. And he was telling them to see what kind of uh, vegetation they had, what kind of fruit they had. Uh, he's telling them to literally scout it out, see what's over there, and then come back and give us a report. And these 12 spies come back, and 10 of them gave a bad report. Joshua and Caleb gave a good report because they, they had faith in God. They knew God had promised them that land, and they knew that if God made a promise, He was going to keep it. But the other ten said, no, we can't do it. These people are too big, uh, and we're fearful of them. We can't go over and take it. They're, we're like grasshoppers to them. Then if we look over in <clears throat> Numbers chapter 14 and verse 23, God is saying, he, he said, Shall by no means see the land which I swore their fathers, nor shall any of those who spurn me shall see it. But my covenant with Caleb, because he had a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring them into the land which he entered, and his descendants shall take possession of it. So Joshua and Caleb were going to be two that literally out of all the people of Israel, them and their families, were going to be able to go over. They went and spied out the land for 40 days. And God said for each day it was going to be a year before they could go over and take the land. So it was 40 years later before they could go over and take the promised land. But Jesus tells us that he wants us to be a scout also. And if, if we look in Acts chapter 8, we see that Philip was a scout. He went over and talked to the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8. And, you know, the eunuch goes on and says, Look here, there's water, what hindereth me from being baptized? And Philip says, If you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, thou mayest. But in the previous verses before that, baptism was never even talked about. But because the eunuch brought it up, we know that Philip talked to him about that. Then if we look in Acts chapter 10, Peter was a scout. He went and scouted out Cornelius and his family. And we look and, and Peter sees that the gospel now is, is for the Gentiles also. And he ends up baptizing him. And then we look at Paul. He went on three missionary journeys. He had a lot of tough times. He went through a lot of different difficult places in those three missionary journeys. But he went and did it. He scouted it out. And he went and tried to... Uh, preached the gospel plan of salvation to people, but he also strengthened churches that had already been planted. And he was a scout. 
And in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, when Jesus gives the Great Commission, He says, Go ye into all the world. Now, when He says, Go ye, does that mean me? Absolutely. Does that mean you? Absolutely. If you're a New Testament Christian, you're a scout. You know, there may be people overseas that, that are willing to hear the, the gospel plan of salvation, but what about your own backyard? What about your own relatives? Jesus says, go ye and be a scout, be a leader, and try to make your team the best team that you can possibly make it. Baseball is always trying to make itself better. But we, as New Testament Christians, here in the year 2022, we need to try to make the church better. And the only way that we're going to do it is to be the best scout for God that we can possibly be. Go ye. Thank you again for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.